as far as project work, that structural improvement and those types of things, that covers again a wide range, but I, you know, just showing a paving operation, it's a typical thing we see in the summer. And uh, this would be on a rural road uh, where it has, I, you can see that to me, not only are they paving a new pavement here, which drivers love, <coughs> but they're gonna be working here. They've already widened here. They already set the ditches back. It looks like they even did some work on that this area right here to make sure that the drainage is out far enough from the road so all seasons of the year this road would drain well and so there when you get into this work that's beyond this edge it gets into this item environmental concerns because you're going to get into um, possibly going through an area that's a wetland you're going to uh, other sensitive areas uh, and those are things that road agencies have to take into consideration there are also times where this project will extend beyond the right-of-way. Uh, what is the right-of-way? The right-of-way is a legal area that uh, the road agency is to maintain the road and drainage and provide space for utilities. There are projects, probably not this one, and what's a good clue? When those power poles are right in a line, the power companies know what they're doing. They're, they're probably a foot to two feet inside the 33 foot line. And that's gonna be a good indication about where the right of way is. Um, but that becomes a, a very, uh, a huge impediment of getting projects going, especially if they're projects that need a center left turn lane and a right turn lane and you're at a corner. All that stuff kind of pushes, uh, and if there's a sidewalk, a curb setting and a sidewalk, right, it pushes the work out beyond 33 feet from center line. Um, where'd that come from? Well, it's by statute uh, from, uh, someone help me, 1929, <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere about that time, there was, uh, it was decided by the state legislature that there would be, uh, uh, the right of way width for a road would be uh, four rods. <laughs> What's that? 33 feet each way from this middle of the road. But the road is not always in the middle, but there's a legal definition of where the actual line is. Um, so anyways, there's, we spent a lot of time kind of sorting out on projects. Is it in the right of way? Isn't it in the right of way? Does that power pole need to be moved out, out of the way and get into more area outside? And who's gonna get that right of way? Is the road agency gonna get the right of way or is it gonna be left to the utility company to move their poles out of the way? Or, um, but uh, so then the other thing with a project like this, uh, there's generally specifications and plans prepared, it takes time and effort. Um, and sometimes that's hiring a consultant to do that depending on how complex it is. And then um, it, and depending on how it's actually funded, it makes a difference of how much time goes into these first four items. Construction oversight, it's, it's pretty similar on most projects, uh, meaning there's, there's usually a road agency that's helping lay out the road, uh, putting some stakes in the ground is what I mean, a surveyor, and then uh, there's an inspector that's generally overseeing that work. There's testing reports that are done to make sure the materials are all right or they're pre-certified because they're coming from certified stock all those things kind of fall into the construction oversight and then also paying the contractor, making sure the contractor is paid on a two week cycle of time. Uh, and then at the end of all that, there's reporting. Joanne has been very active with the Transportation Asset Management Council and there's a reporting that all these major improvements that road agencies are doing are rolled up into the AMG, apologize for that, but I said it once. <laughs> a lot easier for me to just say it. They put together an annual report of just what investment the county has done on the road system and bridges and uh, those types of categories. So it, it's, and there, uh, the Transportation Asset Management Council has a dashboard that if you haven't gone there, there's a, a lot of the things that I'm covering are covered at, uh, at a high level and there are ways to drill down county by county and do some comparisons between counties. So anyways, there's a lot of resources there that are now available largely because this reporting is being done. Uh, yes, 
Um, on that right away, uh, we get a lot of property owners who are confused by that, thinking that we, as a road agency, own that property, when in fact, usually the property owner owns to the middle of the road, but we still <coughs> have the right to control what's in that right away. That Correct. Right? In the rural, all right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's always caveats. In the, uh, in subdivision, the line is different. There, there, there's actually a, uh, if it's still 66 feet, it depends on the county again how much they're requiring developers to dedicate for road right of way, drainage, utilities, sidewalk, all those types of things. It might be a little bit different in, but their lots are described to that line 33 feet or whatever the line has been, that distance has been established. But in the rural area, you're right. They always say, I pay taxes in the middle of the road. <coughs> I own that. Well, there's that's taken into account by the assessors that 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 description to the middle of the road is subject to an easement for r public road and drainage purpose as well as utility. 